Good afternoon, colleagues. Welcome to the free paper session five on medical education. The first presentation is on impact of COVID-19 on postgraduate surgical training, a global perspective, presented by Dr. H. G. P. K. Vijayaratna, a pre-MD surgical trainee of the PJIM. Good afternoon. I'm Pradeep Vijayaratna, surgical registrar, to present the impact of COVID-19 on postgraduate surgical education, a global perspective. The COVID-19 pandemic is still showing a rising trend in the world. Uh, though we could uh, suppress the initial uh, clusters in the country, during that time also we had some inf uh, significant influence on the postgraduate surgical training. And with the rising trend in the world and in the absence of a definitive treatment or a uh, good vaccine at the moment, we are at risk of future epidemics within the country. So uh, I thought of going through the uh, literature to see whether there are uh, reasonable solutions and what are the impacts on uh, postgraduate surgical training at the moment in other countries which are affected by COVID-19. So the main two objectives were to uh, describe the impact of COVID-19 on the postgraduate surgical training because uh, surgical training depends on hands-on training of skills and it has significant impact compared with other surgical uh, specialties from a restriction of the clinical exposure. Second thing, the mitigation efforts taken by the other countries. So it was a literature survey done through the PubMed uh, using the uh, MESH terms, uh, surgical postgraduate surgical training or residency training in COVID-19 era, yielding 82 papers and I have selected further 35 out of those. And in addition, I have accessed the leading surgical colleges to see their uh, programs and their guidelines and situation and summaries given to optimize the management of uh, surgical training process at this moment. So uh, during the COVID-19 era, there had been uh, several key uh, demands on the healthcare system. One is providing the essential care for the critically ill COVID-19 patients. Meanwhile, uh, sustaining the adequate, essential and urgent care for other non-COVID-19 related cases, including the surgical care of the patients, plus maintaining a healthy uh, healthcare staff to maintain the quality of care. And also in addition, meanwhile, they have continued the training programs. So uh, these demands. Provision of adequate care for the COVID-19 patients have uh, uh, le uh, led to diversion of healthcare staff, not only from the critical care and uh, the relevant emergency medical teams, but also from some uh, badly affected areas. The surgical trainees have been involved in the care of the COVID-19 patients, and also the resources, physical resources like PPE had been reserved, and the ICUs, ventilators, those facilities, including the surgical ICUs and surgical theaters and some post-operative care units had been diverted towards the care of the COVID-19 patients. In addition, due to this resource diversion plus the physical distancing measures, there had been reduction in the care of the uh, surgical patients only to the urgent and essential services. Uh, so uh, ultimately, the limiting of care to urgent cases had led to less number of uh, cases to be handled by the surgical trainees and also limiting the staff in rosters to limit the exposure and to keep a reserve, uh, reserve uh, pool of the healthcare staff for the service of the COVID-19 patients, there had been less hours in the care of the patients for the surgical patients. And limiting staff in theatres, especially the surgeries had been done by more experienced surgeons, limiting the opportunity for the surgical trainees to be involved in the surgeries to limit the number of hours spent with the contact of pairs. And also in the emergency department, there had been more of the uh, specialists being involved in the care of the patients because uh, the delay with the trainees being involved had been reduced by doing so. So the trainees involvement had been again reduced and limiting the lectures, conferences and other educational or didactic activities had also been seen and less trauma due to physical distancing activities like uh, motor vehicle collisions and some occupational trauma had been limited. So the negative impact of uh, COVID-19 on surgical training had been on uh, several uh, different degrees depending on the severity of the COVID-19 pandemic within uh, the selected populations and almost all surgical specialties had been affected but some specialties being more affected and less clinical ex exposure there had been variable figures in different studies but up to 80 percent of the clinical exposure the clinic based and work uh, emergency department based uh, exposure had been reported and more than 80 percent of reduction of the surgical skills development opportunities had been reported in several studies difficulty to conduct re clinical research had also been a problem because due to uh, the limited uh, availability of patients but some aspects had been uh, Further, there had been exam uh, had been rescheduled and postponed and uh, fear of transmission of the COVID-19 and psychological impacts had also been there. 
there had been some reportedly positive effects, more time to read and write the research, but not to uh, collect data and to be involved in the patients, and more time for self-study had been there. So there had been several aspects uh, which they have tried to mitigate these uh, effects. One thing is web-based and video conferencing-based educational activities like Zoom-based lectures, conferences, and m, &M sessions, and improved availability of video-based libraries of surgical procedures to see, but not to be involved in. But there had been attempts at using simulation-based uh, surgical skill learning sessions at uh, laboratories and also at home with home-based uh, tools which they have made. Uh, but uh, again, uh, to maintain psychological health, they have uh, tried some psychological support, specialized support for the trainees. So ultimately, uh, this study has many uh, limitations. One is it is English language limited. There had been other countries which are heavily affected, but those the publications may be in other languages. Another thing is this most badly affected areas will be publishing their results once they are out of the crisis. So these are not uh, the current most evidence and the pandemic is evolving. So the conclusions would be the pandemic has significant influence on the uh, hands-on training of the surgical uh, postgraduates. So the pandemic, as the pandemic continues, we need to look for more innovative approaches to improve the surgical training. At the moment, there are some mitigation efforts, but not 100% successful to give a uh, normal training of the postgraduate trainings. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vijayaratna. We have about two minutes for any Questions, yes. Thank you, Dr. Vijayaratna. Um, I just have a question. I think at the beginning you said there were 82 papers that you had reviewed, or yes, yes, available, yes. and you reviewed a percentage of that. How did you select that? Yes, uh, mainly some of the uh, surgical uh, training, uh, pro some were targeting only the surgical training, but others were, when we used the mesh terms, we got uh, some generally addressing the education in the uh, era of COVID-19, so most of them were like that, but I mainly focused on surgical training and I excluded also gen and ops training. I mainly focused on uh, general surgical and other surgical specialities. Thank you. Good answer. Yeah, can I just ask, what do you suggest PGIM do now? <laughs> yeah, it seems that uh, what the other countries had been doing, we have done to some extent, like conference-based learning and all those, most of the video-based learning, uh, the operative libraries are available for us also because those being free now. But uh, we have limited facilities for skill-based learning. We have limited number of uh, skills laboratories at the con in the moment in the country. Uh, but even the skills laboratories would not be sufficient to give the hands-on experience. That will be a real question that uh, the world is trying to answer. I do not think a significant drawback when compared with the other countries in the world, we have done uh, during that period with College of Surgeons and PGM involvement, there had been significant uh, attempts to improve the knowledge-based learning with online uh, activities, but uh, definitely this hands-on skill problem would be there. Right. So I suppose uh, the time will take, I mean, it will take yes, more time, time for there will us be to more. get back to normal, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, thank you, thank Dr. Vijayaratna.